Joining us now to talk about Rouhani's challenges is Professor Mohsen Mawani. He is executive director of the Center for Strategic and Diplomatic Studies at the University of South Florida. He's also the author of the book, The Making of Iran's Islamic Revolution from Monarchy to Islamic Republic. Welcome to the show. I think what's more salient, though, is you've written an, a number of pieces recently about Rouhani and his foreign policy. How much of a departure is there from this foreign policy versus his predecessor? Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, I think there is a major break with the foreign policy of Mr. Ahmadinejad, who was Iran's president for eight years. Uh, Hassan Rouhani campaigned uh, on a promise of moderating Iranian foreign policy, of trying to uh, uh, persuade the Western world to uh, lift some of the crippling sanctions imposed on Iran, and he also promised to open up the political process in Iran. And this is why he, was, uh, he received more than 51% of the popular vote and decisively defeated his seven rivals. Uh, in terms of domestic policies, I have not seen any evidence that he, uh, he is radically departing from uh, Ahmadinejad, although there are some positive signs because some political prisoners have been released and there are talks of releasing the two leaders of the Green Movement, Mr. Karoubi and uh, Mir Hosseini Mousavi. How likely uh, is but that? Overall, today? he Can has brought some changes in Iranian domestic and foreign policies. Well, let me, I, I, I want to ask you about that, but l let me start first with this charm offensive here in New York where he took everybody by storm, headlines everywhere, and of course it ended with this phone call between uh, President Obama and President Rouhani. But one of my favorite quotes comes from a diplomat in New York, and it goes like this, there were a lot of smiles, but what does it all mean? What does it all mean? It means a lot. I think uh, people who talk about offensive charm and I have used that, uh, those words myself. Uh, but uh, these, the offensive charm should be uh, put in the context of what uh, Mr. Rouhani is trying to do. I don't think this is all about Mr. Rouhani uh, uh, smiling and his foreign minister speaking fluent English. I think in the Iranian leadership, uh, a decision has been made to try to reach a compromise with the West uh, uh, over Iran's nuclear program. Uh, the sanctions have devastated the Iranian economy. People are sick and tired, and they want change. And therefore, Mr. Rouhani, as well as the supreme leader, it seems to me, have decided to put an end to this sad state of affair. So yes, there is that charm offensive, but believe me, anybody who uh, was elected after eight years of misery uh, by Mr. Uh, Ahmadinejad would look like a smiling face. Well, let me ask you this. I, I spoke to a former candidate for president who obviously lost the race, but he said if, if you look at Iran and, and the political establishment, the president's more like a clerk. He's not really calling all the shots. You've already alluded to the supreme leader. And it's interesting, his quote that was lifted in a lot of newspapers here in the West, and I'm going to read it to you. Some of the things that happened during the New York trip were, were not appropriate, he said. So some of the things that happened in the New York trip were not appropriate because we believe that the U.S. government is untrustworthy, arrogant, and irrational, and one that reneges on its promises. So this phone call that's been talked about, does it hurt Rouhani or does it help him? Uh, it hurts them among the uh, extreme uh, extremists and uh, conservative right-wingers in Iran. Uh, but I think it has helped him a great deal with the constituency that had elected him. I think the reference to the Iranian president being simply a clerk for the supreme leader is an utter nonsense. You will recall that during Ahmadinejad, when he made that irresponsible comment about the Holocaust, Everybody made a big fuss out of it. Well, you can't have it both ways. The fact of the matter is that the Iranian president is the second most powerful man in Iran after the supreme leader. The difference is that the Iranian president is the head of the Iranian state, and the supreme leader is the head of an Islamic order in Iran. They have different responsibilities, 
and they have different constituencies that they have to satisfy. So for Mr. For Ayatollah Khamenei to come and criticize some aspects of, Ahmadine, uh, of Rouhani's trip, I think was an insurance he, was, uh, he bought for himself. Because if this initiative by Mr. Rouhani succeeds, then Ayatollah Khamenei can, can claim, well, I supported the government. But then if it doesn't succeed and it fails, he can always come back and say, look, I told you Americans are not trustworthy. I think it is a very clever move by the supreme leader in Iran to protect his positions and to satisfy different constituencies that he has to keep happy in Iran. Let me ask you about Geneva. Well, what's the most that can be hoped for, and, and what do you think is going to come out of it? Uh, I, I, uh, one thing I have learned as an, uh, as, as an expert on Iran is not to uh, predict the future, uh, because these are tough negotiations. Uh, what I think uh, is most likely, the concession that Iran is most likely to give, is uh, to stop its enrichment activities at 20%, perhaps to close down the Fado facility. This is the facility pretty close to the city of Qom, uh, which is highly protected. And in return, Iran has to get explicit recognition for what Iran calls its alienable right to enrich uranium and then a gra the, a, the gradual lifting of uh, sanctions. Now, if the West and Iran can reach an agreement based on those uh, uh, parameters, then once uh, they begin to build confidence, and th then they can move and, and, and add to, uh, uh, to the dimensions of their uh, agreement. We're out of time, I, so this has got to be very brief, I, but I want to ask you this. Iranian conservatives say he is a sheep in wolf's clothing. You know Israel's prime minister says he is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Who is this guy and what kind of clothes is he wearing? Uh, he wears a robe, and uh, uh, he is not a sheep. He's not a wolf. Uh, he's not an animal. He's a human being. And like any other human being and any other politicians, he has his... Uh, own motivations for doing certain things, and uh, uh, he uh, tr is trying to maximize Iranian national interest, as Mr. Netanyahu is trying to maximize the national interest of Israel. Uh, the way I look at Mr. Rouhani is that I will embrace his charm offensive, but I would also ask him to verify uh, what he claims he is willing to do. Trust and verify is what Ronald Reagan said many years ago, trust and verify is what I think Mr. Rouhani has to, and trust and verify is exactly what the Western governments have to demonstrate toward Iran as well. Professor Milani, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.